everything that was going on, somehow, me, a person who has designed kitchens and baths for so long, I managed to fuck up. I fucked up, guys. Like, I totally fucked up. Hey, guys, what's up? Um, today, we are doing a deeper dive into my tiny home bathroom. Hold up. Today, we are spotlighting the bathroom. What I need you to do is go ahead and get your smoothie, your tea, your hot chocolate, whatever it is. Get your snack, sit back and relax, because it is going to be a little bit of a long one. Yes, I just saw you check the number like, fuck. But, yo, know, what can I do? Talk to the hand, talk to the hand. I have to be able to give you the details and I can't do that in a 10 or 15 minute video. These videos tend to be about two hours long and then I have to trim all the fat. So I wish it was that easy on my waistline, but anyway, okay, so let's get into it. Okay guys, so this video is going to be a little bit more informative as I have been getting a lot of questions in the comment section about how to do things and I figured I'd just take creative license and go ahead and do that in this video. So that is also the reason why it's a little bit longer than my normal videos, but I think that you guys will enjoy it. Because these videos are a little more in depth when it comes to materials used, accessories, how to, mistakes, all of that stuff, I think that it's more beneficial for you this way. What I want you to know is that you can have a spectacular tiny space, small space, as long as you follow some simple, basic guidelines when it comes to design. In a bathroom, you want to consider, first and foremost, lighting. You also want to think about the colors that you choose, the textures, and you want to make sure that you have the correct items for plumbing installation if you're going that far. Some of you may just be doing a facelift and not changing any of the, the plumbing behind the wall. But all of these things you want to take into consideration and have it before you even start any kind of renovation. Okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's talk about lighting. So the thing I need for you to understand about lighting is it is probably the one thing you want to choose first and I say that because there are so many applications that you can use for putting lighting in your bathroom you can have overhead lighting like a ceiling light you can have recessed cans you can have sconces or a light that goes over your sink, like a bar with three, four, five lights, one light, two light. Lighting is a huge deal. There are a couple reasons why you want to make sure that you have the right lighting. Some lighting can be just for ambient, and some lighting could be task. By task, I mean, if I don't have the right lighting to put my makeup on, I'm gonna look like a whole goddamn clown. And I can tell you, when I was on vacation, my Airbnb did not have the proper lighting. So I walked around a couple times looking like a whole goddamn clown. <laughs> so I just need for you guys to understand, there is task lighting where you're gonna need to either shave, pluck an eyebrow, whatever it might be, put on your makeup, make sure that your lashes are good, and then you have your ambient lighting, your decorative lighting, like sconces and things like that. Lighting you want to consider in the very beginning. Because of your space, you wanna make sure that you have electrical in the right areas and that you are not going to box yourself into a fixture that no longer works with your space because you waited to choose your light at the end. Don't do that. Choose your lighting in the beginning or at least have a good idea of what type of lighting you're going to be using in that space and therefore you don't box yourself in. You can easily match thousands of faucets and other fixtures and so on and so forth to your lighting 
but finding the right lighting for the right application at the last minute will come back and bite you in the ass. So don't do that. You will be limited if you decide to go backwards with selecting your light. As long as you have the proper lighting for the things that you need to do in that space, then fine. Some women, for instance, have vanities, and so they don't worry about the lighting so much in the bathroom mirror because they have vanities. In Jewel, I had a vanity, and um, in Dream, I don't have a vanity. So lighting was really important for me in this bathroom, and I ended up with a really good light, and I love the light that I ended up getting from Ikea. I did want sconces, but I don't even think that sconces would have given me the amount of light that I need to actually get this face looking like I do. People be like, she thinks she cute. She I can't. I can't. She act too bougie. And I do. <laughs> now I have managed to make my bathroom look larger and more high end as well as functional by just following these guidelines that I'm going to go over in this particular video. Now there is so much that you can break down in a bathroom because there's so many small bits and pieces, so many moving parts that this could literally be a five part series, like a mini series on like Netflix or something. Netflix. But um, anyway, you know, I'm not going to do that. In the future, what I will do is I'll do shorter videos that just feature like maybe one or two products in my home, my bathroom, for instance, that will break down what I use, why I used it, how I feel about it now, if I would change anything. Those can be shorter videos if I'm just doing like a reveal of like say the faucet or the sink or something like that but when it comes to doing these spotlights of a whole entire room even though it's a small room it still has all of the functioning parts of your bathroom so I need to get into all of that so let's get into it so here I am taking out this bathroom spotlight and the sink is already in, the counter's already in, um, but I've been waiting to do this. So this is what I'm doing while the shower is also being worked on on the other side and hopefully we found the leak and solved the problem. The gutters are full and there was issues with the front door last night at the dawn of thunderstorm, but um, so yeah. button when I was pulling out the other part so sorry you missed it however I'm just trying to get this bottom part out and yeah so let's start with making the bathroom feel larger the first thing that I did was I chose a white paint please don't ask me in the comments what color paint because I'm gonna be honest with you I used the least expensive but nice paint that I could find and so Walmart has like a signature brand that it's not the cheap 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 but it's just white so I just used a satin white paint I don't know the color I don't know any of that stuff now if one of these paint companies want to come a call in you know Benjamin Moore Sherman Williams I'm here for it you know I've used those paints in the past but right now I'm not about to spend $70 on a gallon of paint sorry not doing it so with that said I did use a lighter paint the reason why I did that is because lighter paints such as whites and light beiges and light grays make the walls feel like they just kind of recede and they don't feel choppy you know some of the darker colors can make your fit yeah, make your face your face make your space feel and look choppy I chose a bold graphic wallpaper for my feature wall and that's something that you can also do and we'll talk about like feature walls we'll probably have to do a whole separate video on that because I have several feature walls in here 
whilst the whole entire home is white, it doesn't feel boring because I have so many feature walls in here. By putting in a larger mirror that takes up almost the entire space of that nook, it actually opened up that space a lot. I mean, if you see the little tiny cabinet that was in there and the little mirror that was there, it was like, like shit, like who thought of that? But I wish that I'd had just a slightly bit more space because I wanted to use sconces originally to flank the sides of the mirror, but it didn't work out that way. Now with the mirror, um, the other thing is having a larger mirror, it allows more light to bounce off of each other in the room. So with the white walls, the large mirror, you know, I do have skylights in here and I know everybody don't have skylights in their bathroom, but adding all of these different elements actually makes the space feel a lot larger than it is. So you really want to consider where you can having ample light and lighter colors so that things kind of just play off of each other and give the illusion of having a bigger space. As you can see from the B-roll, I ran my curtains and my wallpaper. Everything that I could get as close to the ceiling, I took it all the way up to the ceiling because that elongates the space. It makes the eye go all the way up. You get the illusion that you're in a bigger space, a larger space, when the ceilings feel like they're really high. So a lot of times people make the mistake of shortening their rooms by hanging their curtains low, putting their mirrors or cabinets low because they're like, well, I can't reach it. Get a step stool. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Take it all the way up as far as you can go. Don't stop your room by placing things too short because visually it stops your eye right there and gives you the feeling that the room is small. Next, choosing fixtures that have cleaner lines and are not outdated actually gives your space a more high-end feel. Now, what finish you decide to go with is up to you. That's personal. I tend to love brass. I don't like the older outdated brass, but I love the newer, more modern satin brass fixtures. I am a fan of it. I'm a big fan of the matte black. And, you know, I used to be big on brushed nickel, polished nickel. Those used to be my things. That was my jam before. But I have finally started to see the fixtures that I like in the satin brass finish and even the polished brass finish. And it just really pops. So for the last probably couple of years, that has been the finish that I have chosen the most to go with now like again what you choose what you like and what works in your space that's personal to you what i'm just trying to say is try to stick to something that has cleaner lines unless you are doing a traditional or ornate bathroom there's absolutely no reason for you to have all of this shit going on you know and too much bling and dare I say it I might hurt somebody's feelings. Let's try an exercise where we say whatever we want out loud to each other no matter how critical. It'll be fun. Let's start with Janine. All of that fake diamond looking stuff. Yeah. Mm, that's not the move anymore. So I'm not saying you can't have like a little bit of bling like diamond like. Reel it in. Reel it in. Reel it in. As for my faucet the color of my faucet and actually the color palette of my bathroom was chosen by you guys the matte black with the satin brass for my finishes and the faucet was one of the first things that i chose so the mirror came shortly after that when i found a matte black mirror with the satin brass accents and then i ended up going with the chocolate brown on my cabinets and the satin brass accents I ended up doing the matte black in the shower because I could not find a satin brass that would fit the type of fixtures that we have in an RV style bathroom. 
you're very limited to the types of fixtures that you can put so I ended up doing a matte black and I combined several pieces like what you see in my shower was not a kit it was literally me ordering about four or five different pieces through Amazon to put together what I wanted for my shower at the base of my shower I love the way that it looks because it has sort of a hot tub kind of a feel it was just plain white and I went ahead and took some of the extra Palisades tile and uh, I've been installed that around the bottom of it. We didn't want to put it on the top because we didn't want any water to maybe possibly get trapped in there, but just facing it around the, the front of the shower pan gives it a more spa-like look. It looks more like a hot tub. And then having the teak mat, shower mat inside, that just kind of took it up another notch. So I really love it. That teak mat was something that I got from Amazon and no, it did not come fitting. I had to cut it down. So I did trim it down a little bit so that it would fit. Let's talk about tiles. Okay, so in your bathroom, you can have tiles on the wall, you can have tiles on the floor, but you're gonna have tiles or some variation of tile somewhere in that space, be it a ceramic tile or porcelain tile. Uh, I ended up going with Palisades. Now, this is not your typical tile. I live in a tiny home, which is a park model RV that I converted. I have to keep my weight down. I wanted a porcelain look, but I couldn't afford porcelain weight in here. If that's your situation, then you definitely wanna look into Palisades and tiles like it. I can't tell you exactly what the substrate is because I don't have the box in front of me, but it's something that you can find specifically at Lowe's and I have seen private sellers selling it on Amazon as well. It's a little bit pricey, but it's, I think it would say that it probably is right there with uh, porcelain tiles. Uh, or if you use like a natural stone tile in your bathroom, it's not gonna be that expensive, but it's probably right there comparable with a porcelain tile. They have their own trims and my tile goes in with a silicone. I am going to probably do a separate video with that because Ivan had never installed this before. I had never installed this before. So it was kind of sort of like a trial and error kind of thing. And because of the price and the way that it's sold, it's not sold by the piece, it's sold by the box. We had to make sure that this tile was going to fit and we had very little room for mistakes. It's been a uh, long, sweaty <laughs> day. Okay. So with that said, I knew that I wanted to use a larger tile. Smaller tiles can make your space feel a little busy. No, it can make your space feel a lot busy. Unless you're using the smaller tile as an accent, which I love. I love doing little smaller glass mosaics or natural stone mosaics. Those really add a lot of oomph to uh, otherwise boring space. I decided not to go with a border in this bathroom, even though I did one in Jewel and it looked beautiful. The tile that I did in here, it just looks so clean and spa-like that I decided to leave it the way that it was. And I also decided to go ahead and lay it horizontally to give it a more elegant spa-like feeling. Um, at first, Ivan thought that we were gonna be hanging it vertically, and I was like, no, let's go horizontal, let's stack it, keep the line straight, and go all the way to the ceiling, and he absolutely loved it. So, and yeah, I love it too. I think I'll do a separate video on the shower itself, like the walls and the palisades, how you install it. That may be a separate video. I'm gonna have to pull Ivan back in for that one too. So, yeah. So it turns out that this thing here is what has been leaking. There's no water behind it. The water was all along here. This is the 
new tile that's going in. But all the water was leaking right there. And then I thought that this neo angle went all the way back. So the tile was supposed to go all the way into the corner, but now the neo angle base does not go all the way back. And we have to find a way to MacGyver that corner because finding this base is impossible in this size. If I changed it, I gotta reroute all the plumbing because everything's in the center now of the newer ones, but they still have that cut off in the back. Okay, so I had to do some serious <laughs> thinking and because the existing shower walls had come with a built-in shelf system, what we decided to do was go ahead and cut it out <laughs> from the existing shower walls. And then Ivan figured out a way to install it so that it just was flush with the tile. The other hard surface that you want to consider in the bathroom is the countertops. I fucked up, guys. Like, I totally fucked up. When it came to my bathroom countertop, in the midst of everything that was going on, somehow, me, a person who has designed kitchens and baths for so long, I managed to fuck up the measurement on my countertop. Now, it wasn't too short from left to right, but it was too short from front to back. Well, my countertops gave me some issues. That tape measure deceived me. I measured wrong and then I also left my top out in the heat so the sun started to melt the glue on the edge. And yeah, I know. Let me show you how I remedied that. If you take a look at my countertop, you'll see that it's two tiered in the back. And normally you would have like a backsplash back there of some sort to, you know, catch the water. So because my countertop was too short and I can't even tell you Ivan's face, when he went to put it down, he was like, uh, uh. <laughs> so we were trying to figure out like what was going to be the next step. So I contacted Kitchen Connection, who does all of my countertops. Thanks, girls. I love you. Uh, and Christine was like, well, we have a little bit of material left, but we don't have enough to make a new countertop. And I figured that because I knew what I ordered for the kitchen and the bathroom and what it would cover. But I knew if we had like just a little bit left that we could do something different. So here's where I put on my MacGyver hat again. And I decided to not do just a regular backsplash, but do a backsplash that was going to be sort of a shelf. So you'll see from my backsplash, it comes out a little bit and then drops down. So I just had to make little L and then that L goes against the wall. So in the back of it, it's hollow. You, you can't tell, but it looks like a solid piece, but it's hollow. And that L just sits right there and goes right across the back of the sink. It worked out perfect because I had enough space. I already had enough space for my sink to fit and enough space for that shelf to fit in the back. And because my sink is so big, it actually worked out perfect. So it was a happy accident. It was a beautiful mistake. I don't know what you want to call it, but it worked out great. My soap dispenser sits up higher. My little plants that I like to put up there, tchotchke, whatever, it all fits right on top. And it looks like I intentionally meant for it to be that way, but I have to be completely honest with you guys. That was a fucking genius accident I don't even know what to call it but yeah it worked out great and now I love it and it's something that I would probably end up doing in the future again if I was going to be using such a high sink now if you want to see my rant about the dark countertops my black steel then you want to watch this other video I think it's up here I'll link that video so that you guys can check out my rant in the kitchen if you haven't already seen that one as for my sink i think that you guys have only been privy to seeing uh the two of my bathroom sinks one here and the one in jewel but i can promise you that probably for the last 20 years 
maybe longer every single sink that has gone into my bathrooms that i've created have been a piece of art wow it's beautiful oh, oh i wish everyone in abalonia could see this I don't look at it as just something that I need to wash my hands or brush my teeth or wash my face. I look at it as a piece of art. When you walk into the bathroom, there's absolutely no reason why your sink needs to be boring. So I have had glass sinks. I have had sinks made out of a complete piece of stone that was carved out. I've had metal sinks. I've had, uh, you know, like copper and I've had wooden sinks like the one that I had in Jewel. I love that sink. I almost repeated it, but it just was not big enough. And uh, Jewel had a smaller counter than Dream. So I went with this larger sink that kind of looks like wood on the exterior and has the matte black finish on the inside, but it's actually all porcelain. And I love it. I knew that I wanted to add that effect of wood, but there was no wood sink that was going to fit in my space the way that I needed it to. By the way, if you're looking for some unique sinks, uh, Etsy has some really cool things. That's where I got Jules sink from. I bought it from someone on Etsy and they were carving it out of trees, I believe in California. So yeah, definitely check out Etsy if you want to get some unique things that you're not going to see in the big box commercial stores like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Fuck, that was long winded. In your bathroom, a lot of people don't leave room for art. So I decided that since I wasn't going to run my wallpaper around my whole entire bathroom, that I would find a piece of artwork that would be complementary to the wallpaper. So I'm a photographer. I decided that I was going to find a piece of artwork that was mine. So I went fishing through my work and luckily, lo and behold, I had done a photograph of a model in Australia and she had on sort of a zebra print fabric and again me MacGyvering like it wasn't a dress it looks like a full-on dress but I just went to the store I found this fabric and then the model and I went out to this cliff and uh, we shot there with the zebra fabric at any rate it really really worked with my wallpaper oh okay I get it it makes sense it makes sense so don't forget your art just so I can point out a couple things that you guys might be interested in the curtains that I use for my shower not the cur shower curtain that's vinyl and I got that from Walmart and I made them myself I was working six jobs no man I was a wedding photographer me to me shoe salesman woman instructor Susie chef I'm taking a bar exam all while delivering his laser features oh. you know what I mean right okay so the white curtains I got from Ikea the light fixture came from Ikea. My hardware I ordered off of Amazon. The door hardware was also ordered off of Amazon and I used this big chunky handle for it to like just make it stand out. And I also ordered some hooks as well from Amazon. So you don't wanna forget about those things. When it comes to my toilet tissue holder and toilet bowl cleaner, that is actually something that I MacGyvered myself and uh, it wasn't cheap. The toilet tissue holder I got from Amazon is probably about 60 bucks and then I went ahead and ordered a rectangular black uh, toilet brush and I screwed it into the base of the other. So one had a screw hole in it. I just took it out. and So yeah, I also changed out the doors in my bathroom, the one leading into my bathroom, the one in the bathroom that uh, hides the washer and dryer. Okay guys, so one of the other things that we need to talk about are my cabinets. My cabinets are the same. Right now, I'm just filling the existing holes from my old cabinets with some wood filler. I've already sanded them down and then I'll sand them down again. This is because I'm going to be priming it 
painting it and then putting on my own doors. So when it came to priming these cabinets, I tinted the primer because these cabinets are gonna be dark. So instead of going over white, I added some black. The doors, however, are different. And again, in the kitchen video, I went on a similar rant about doors and hardware. I ended up painting my cabinets. I customized the color because they didn't have an espresso that was dark enough, like a black brown. So the woman at Lowe's, and this paint I did do at Lowe's, and then we just kept tweaking it until we got to the color that we needed it to be for the cabinets. So I painted the cabinets, I primed them first, because as you know, painting cabinets, you wanna make sure that you knock it down with some sandpaper first and a light sanding, then you prime, then you paint. So I did paint the cabinet boxes themselves because my sink cabinet, one side is actually a dummy door. There's nothing behind it because my hot water heater sits behind it and you can't get to it from the inside anyway, so it's an exterior thing. And then um, and then I have plenty of space on, on the other side for other tchotchka. And then the tall cabinet that is right here behind me on my left is um, the same cabinet that was in here. And I went ahead and did this cabinet up, painted it, bought these doors. I got these doors from Ikea. They were part of the, uh, the tall pantry uh, series that they have in the section and um, and then I used the same hinges that I used for the kitchen cabinets that way I could conceal the hinge and give it a modern look that was a fucking mouthful okay guys I think that's it yeah that's it long enough for you <laughs> don't come for me all right love you bye Am I giving Princess Leia vibes or am I giving Minnie Mouse? What you think? Let me know in the comments. Ah, I like these little bun buns. They look kind of cute. Holy shit, guys. If you made it to the end of the video, I love you. I love all my co-stars. Thank you, everybody. All the newbies, all the day ones. I appreciate you. I do have some special shout outs set aside for Caffeine69, Michelle B, Kita Kit 2587, Hellacious Kitten, Word of the Day J McPherson Jr., Fairy Child for Freedom, Justice. Love y'all. Have a great day. Bye.